Hey, greetings, welcome, Chris here. So I talk a little bit about uh, preparations in some of my other videos. We do food test challenges, so I get to actually test uh, my own food supplies to see, see if they hold up okay over the test of time. And I always enjoy, <laughs> I always enjoy those videos. In fact, I look forward to, uh, I kind of have a mental lineup of uh, you know, food to test in the future. But I did want to specifically address uh, one area of preparation that's often missed, especially in the, the prepper community, and that's just uh, emergency fund preparations, right? And that's having some store of dollar bills available to you uh, to get you through uh, a financial crisis, right? Because uh, the crisis can come in all shapes and forms, and it's the rare crisis that's going to require us to pull out, you know, canned goods, and weapons and ammunition and you know access our hoard of gold or silver coins um, it's much more likely that you're going to have a crisis that uh, hits you in the pocketbook when you least expect it. it could be localized it could be global in its nature as you're seeing now with some of what what's happening with uh, the covid virus and impact on markets on employment things like that so a critical part of being prepared um, it, it's being prepared for all kinds of uh, circumstances and outcomes and not just you know situations that require you to open you know some, some canned food right so the I want to talk a little bit about the importance of that right and how it's not uh, it, it's 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 simple but it's not necessarily easy right and I don't want to minimize um, how difficult or easy it could be for any any particular individual or family to be able to pull together money on a regular basis to simply sock away into some kind of savings account but it but it's pretty critical and there are some things that you can do uh, to help right and very much like preparing you know food supplies where you're gonna store long-term canned goods that are gonna you know sit on your shelf for a decade uh, you can build that up and an emergency fund is no different so then, and in fact, YouTube is full of people who will tell you how to build an emergency fund. Dave Ramsey is probably one of the more famous, and he has his, uh, he has his uh, I forget what he calls them, the baby steps, I believe. And I think his first baby step is to build up an emergency fund that is $1,000, right? And so that's step number one. You don't do anything else until you've done that. And for good reason, because life is likely to hit you upside the head with all kinds of circumstances that require you to fork over, you know, hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars, right? Whether it's your fridge breaks, car breaks, you need a new washer dryer, need a new furnace, which I suspect I'll need in the next couple of years. So I'm having to slowly save some money for that. Uh, but but the important thing is to save, and you don't have to do it all at once, right? Some uh, some important things to think about is. It can be as little as $10 a month. It could be $5 a month. The, probably the most important thing is to build up the habit of saving, right? And that's, a, that's a, a skill and a behavior that will serve you well throughout your life if you can, if you can develop it, right? So develop a, an ability to put some money aside, even if it is just $5 a month, put it into a place that is not accessible easily. Uh, that's not to say that it should be super hard, but what I do for my own emergency funds is I have a separate bank, uh, an account in a separate bank that I don't normally use for anything, and it has it it, it provides um, interest. It yields interest on the money that's sitting in there. Unlike my other the bank accounts that I have my direct deposit uh, paychecks going into, I think the the return on that might be 0.02 percent, which is to say nothing. Right? I'm not making any money on cash sitting in. My regular savings or checkings account. So I've specifically sought out uh, banks that offer um, uh, some kind of yield on money sitting in there. And there's a couple that I want to introduce you to here, and, and, and introduce you to why you might want to do that, right? Because it's uh, it's it's certainly not rocket science, but when you see it uh, on screen, it becomes a little more clear about you know when you don't when you if you have an emergency fund and it's just money sitting waiting for this emergency. Uh, if you don't have it in an interest-bearing account, it is just like giving money away if you're not taking advantage of some kind of interest. So let's, uh, we're going to take a look at that. And, and along the lines of preparing financially for crisis, uh, you know, I think it's worth 
noting I don't particularly subscribe to I don't subscribe to the belief that having physical metals is uh, something that is particularly valuable right it's specifically in uh, if we're talking about um, your your need to be able to access liquidity and by that I mean you get you, you need dollars to buy something whether it's pay your rent or you need to buy some groceries from the grocery store or put gas in your car converting converting physical metals to that is incredibly difficult and it's and it you're going to run into the same problems you run in with any type of investment where you're it's all about the timing right and so if if you're trying to fill your truck up with gas with some the value of a coin that's going up or down and you need the gas today you're gonna to have to sell that coin and lock in at whatever silver selling at that day and so that's not particularly um, effective for you if, if, if this is an investment type of thing um, yeah and, and it's and it's contingent on somebody wanting your silver right so it's it, it may not uh, it may not be uh, quite the tool that you want it to be whereas a common currency and you can think whatever you want about uh, fiat currencies and there's a, the world is full of debate about uh, government issued central bank issued currencies but that is the common currency right so uh, you know if you're looking to buy something from somebody in an area the common currency is the common currency the idea that you're going to deviate into trading gold or or silver or other precious metals that's going to become a complicated just a complicated transaction just between two people right first having to agree what the value of these things are you know and if you're looking at that if you're at that if you're in that kind of crisis um, I have another video just about prepper thoughts and you may want to consider just the use value of certain you know non-precious metals for common trade right um, things like tools uh, food right things that have some value that aren't just a coin that has no use value whatsoever right a coin can only sit uh, sit in the safe and you're going to trade it for something else so when we're talking about building an emergency fund we're specifically talking about um, having access to cash in a currency that is relevant and useful within whatever region of the world you're in right so we're talking about that and then and then ideally you can put that currency into a bank account of some sort where it's going to draw interest and we'll, we're going to walk through that all right so the basics let's just start with a, a basic investment calculator approach to this right so our goal is to save up a thousand dollars and let's say we start with twenty dollars and let's say we're going to try to do this over a couple of years you know and and your timeline is going to vary we'll say two years um, let's say it's just you're depositing into your standard bank account that maybe has a a point zero two percent return right and you're going to add twenty dollars a month you might act actually have to add more than that. let's say forty dollars a month and let's see what that gets us over two years okay so it's almost a thousand dollars right it's just short maybe if I make this 45 a month uh, we'll get there and you can see your your interest is uh, you, you've made 27 cents on your dollar so and this is a this is not an uncommon approach to saving right you you're putting money into a savings account because it's it's easy it's there but let's say you took that same money and you every month moved it into uh, for instance, I know CIT Bank right now will offer you uh, a 1.7% interest on a savings account, and I know because I have one. And so over that same two-year period, you're not making a ton, but you're making $18, right? And so, and I, I've asked my kid this question, if you had the choice of getting $18 or not getting $18 for doing what you're going to do anyway, what would you do? What would your choice be? you know and, and it's it's kind of a silly question to ask because obviously if somebody if, if there's eighteen dollars on the table I would like to have that eighteen dollars so if you're looking to save up 
uh, for your emergency fund, it's worthwhile to shop around. Now, I will note, I mentioned CIT Bank, um, and you, they do have a, a savings program that offers, it's 1.7%, but you have to make continual contributions you have to make continual deposits every month to it. And I believe the minimum deposit amount is 100 bucks every month to gain access to that 1.7% rate. Um, or you can have up to $25,000 in the account, at which, at which point you don't have to deposit anymore. You'll get that 1.7%. Additionally, uh, there's a Live Oak, Live Oak Bank offers 1.75% interest. So if we look at... Live Oak, Live Oak Bank, go down to personal banking. And I just started an account with these guys recently. You can see that they give you 1.75%. Um, here are some requirements. They're, 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 not any, they're not real specific requirements. Uh, no monthly balance is required, yada, yada, yada. Um, and if we go back and well, let's just bump this up to 1.75. See how much more we get. Oh, so we get a few cents more. It's not a huge deal. The main issue is that you want to get some interest. So over a two-year period, you're contributing 45 bucks per month into uh, this emergency fund account. Um, you have the choice of getting a free $18 or not, right? And uh, the way that you can, using online banking today, it took nothing. In fact, it was, it was ridiculously easy to set up this Live Oak bank account. I only had to, I didn't have to submit any paperwork. I had to agree that I was a U.S. citizen and a few other things. Uh, it, it, I think step two of my application process was to link it to my online bank account where I actually, I don't get any interest there, but that's where most of my, that's where my payrolls land, my paychecks lands. I connected to that. I initiated a transfer of some money and that takes about two days. So in two days, the amount that I initiated to transfer over will transfer over. Um, and for me personally, I, I, do, I do believe in emergency funds and I even want them, I want my emergency money in a couple of different banks, right? Because one bank can have an emergency and then that emergency becomes your emergency. So uh, you can get maybe even borderline paranoid about this, but you know, there's no, there's no harm in it. Now, Dave Ramsey's approach to to your emergency fund is that you start with a thousand dollars and so if we look at you know if you start with twenty dollars and you're looking at a two-year time horizon and you, you contribute forty five dollars a month you know after two years twenty four months you're gonna have an emergency saved up that is a thousand dollars and the idea with an emergency fund is that you do not touch this money except in the event of emergencies and em emergency is kind of a subjective term that you will define yourself but it is it is not I feel like I want a Big Mac today, right? So I'm not, I'm not going to take $10 out of my emergency fund to go buy some McDonald's. It could be uh, I need a new washer dryer or not, right? I think that uh, maybe you can make do with you know, your washer dryer is kind of working, but not 100% working. Um, that becomes a judgment call. How important it is to you um, and how every time you use your emergency fund, you, you're exposed to risk because you then have to replenish your emergency fund once you've drawn off it. So, you know, as soon as you're using money from your emergency fund, you should be pushing money back into it as soon as you can to build it back up to that level. Now, when you look past your first thousand dollars, what a lot of literature will tell you, and Dave Ramsey's baby steps say this as well, and I forget which baby step it is, if it's number three or four, but it is to build up an emergency fund that is three to six months of household expense. And so when you think in terms of having three to six months of your household expense, that becomes a much larger amount, obviously, and everybody's household expenses are different. But you'll say, for instance, in my house, if, if my household expense is $4,000 a month and I want to try to maintain you know, a standard of living that allows for me to spend that much, and that covers mortgage, heat, lights, that kind of stuff, so three months would be... $12,000 and six months would be $24,000. And you can see the idea with a six month uh, emergency fund is $24,000. That's money that's just sitting. It's just sitting waiting for me to uh, do something with it. So let's look back at this calculator and say, okay, well, let's say I start with $1,000 and then I'm going to contribute $500 
um, and get a 1.7% return. And let's see how much money I can build up over, f we'll say, three years for now. And, and I'm, my goal here is to build up my emergency fund. Okay, so I've gotten, yeah, my total balance is $19,500. I've uh, accumulated $516 worth of interest over three years, which, you know, from an investment point of view is not great, but if this is money that you just need to have liquid access to, meaning that it's instant access, you don't have to sell anything, you're not selling your, your car or a motorcycle or you're trying to sell stocks that could be up, they could be down, right? So you're not wanting to be forced into a situation, situation where you have to liquidate things to have access to money. Having money sitting in a low interest account is kind of an ideal situation. And getting a rate of return of 1.75 is uh, very doable, right? And in fact, this Live Oak Bank isn't the only one. There are other banks out there that offer this. You just want to read the details, understand what you're getting into. Um, this one, there were, you know, there were really not a lot of details that were negative, that detracted from it. And so let's look at the uh, let's look at the alternative to this rate of interest that we get on our emergency fund. Let's say I'm not. I'm just saving it in my regular old savings account at the local bank at a, a, a point zero two five percent I'm getting seven dollars in interest over the same three-year period so you can go from seven dollars to five hundred and sixteen over a three-year period and let's say over four years it's going to take me a little bit longer to build up to that actual uh, twenty four thousand dollars that I want for my emergency fund there we go. So I've kind of hit the mark, right? So I've got a balance that it's going to last me six months if my monthly household expenses are 4000 And on top of that, I've made $906 in interest. And if it's just sitting there. So at this point, I'm not contributing anything. I'm just going to let it sit there. And I've got my emergency fund sitting there for, let's say, 10 years. It's now at a $25,000 balance. So I'm not contributing, I'm just earning interest over 10 years. What's that going to make, right? So 10 years later, just on your emergency fund, you've been able to pull in $4,700, right? And so I really can't emphasize enough that one, an emergency fund is uh, very important to have, right? And it, I, I do feel like for many it's a luxury, but I think that it's something that if you plan for, you can achieve. It does take sacrificing. It does take delayed gratification and not getting everything you want right, right at the same time. But the value that an emergency fund brings to you and your family is incredible. And it, it, it can uh, obviously get you out of some troubled times uh, if troubled times come your way. And if you're developing an emergency fund, it definitely behooves you to shop around for a savings account type that is going to deliver some level of interest because again, just looking at what we see on screen here, I've got a 1.7% 1.75 rate of return versus a 025, which I think is what I'm getting on one of my savings accounts. Um, you know, $62 on a $25,000 sum of money sitting in a bank. 62 versus, and that's over 10 years, versus 1.75. You know, it's just night and day, right? Four, 47. You know, it, 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 what it does is it, it helps to, it keeps your uh, emergency fund even bigger. Inflation proofs it to some degree, even though inflation's at a little, a little higher rate than that. Uh, but you kind of see where I'm going. So, in the spirit of preparations, and preparations isn't all about storing canned goods and ammunition and guns for the end of the world. It is also planning for some practical realities that are much more likely to arrive at your doorstep in the form of financial crises, whether it is um, for your family or even somebody that you care about, a loved one, um, and they need help. And sometimes uh, an emergency fund um, allows you to help in ways that you might not other be otherwise be able to help and making sure that you're getting some rate of return on that money that's just sitting there by design is just a great idea right so if I was to ask my kid the same question about you know if, if you're gonna have some money sitting some, somewhere and one way gives you six dollars and the other way gives you four thousand and seven hundred dollars 
it's an obvious choice. Right? You're going you're gonna to go for the option that gives you that $4,700 for the same amount of money sitting there. A little bit of work to set the accounts up. I won't deny that. It does take a little bit of discipline to make sure that you're putting money aside so that you can build up this account. Uh, but, you know, in the long run, you have, a, you have a safety net that others don't have. And that, that applies to, you know, food preparations as well. All you're doing is building up some level of uh, safety net or insurance uh, for when tough times come, if they come. So that's, uh, that's all that I had to talk about. I did feel like we talk about preparations. I, did, I wanted to make sure that everybody understood that the world is full of risk uh, and, and financial risk is actually something that's much more likely to materialize in your life. And one way that we deal with this financial risk in our lives is to build up an emergency fund. If you do it from day one when you're a kid, you know, my kid's 16, has got her first job and I'm teaching her that you know, for her, her emergency fund needs to get bigger over time. So now she's pulling in maybe, maybe six to 10,000 a year. So a couple of months worth of salary for her is not a lot. If she had a $3,000 emergency fund, uh, she'd be quite all right compared to other 17 or 18 year olds out there on the planet. But as she gets older, as her income increases and her expenses increase uh, proportionally, she'll want a larger emergency fund to cover those types of contingencies. Um, and so she's starting to get it. I won't say she's fascinated by it or intrigued by the idea of finance and personal finance, uh, but uh, inevitably she will benefit from having her emergency fund because life has a way of uh, just clobbering you when you least expect it. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, shout out to those who are uh, you know, managing an emergency fund and for those of you who are struggling to do so, you know, good luck. Uh, always hope for the best for you um, you know I'd say the discipline and self and delayed gratification you know are key elements in this and it's easy to say I understand it's a, it's a s simple concept not always easy to implement but good luck uh, take care as always and uh, we'll see you next time